Many people are gonna have to start working from home at the moment, so I've been working from home for about eight years. Here's the lessons that I've learnt that you can learn right now, and you can kind of shortcut all of that painful learning process of sitting there and watching Jeremy Kyle and morning TV and having sugar crashes at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hello, I'm Alan Spicer. I'm your YouTube certified expert. I'm also a self-employed entrepreneur that's been working at home for about eight years now. But working from home isn't as easy as everybody fantasizes about. I know that you've been packing yourself onto that train. I understand that you've been commuting every morning to that job and clocking in at stupid o'clock. I did that for a good 12, 13, 14 years. I did security, I did night work, I did banking, I've done retail, I've done all the horrible things that you hate to do. And then I started working at home and I learned these lessons very quickly. One, start early. You will be amazed by how much stuff you can get done starting earlier than you would have done from your normal clock in at nine o'clock. At the moment, I have a human alarm clock that wakes me up at around about six o'clock anyway, and she wants feeding, and she wants uh, entertainment, and Dougie, and anything else on TV, but, the advantage there for me is that no matter what, whether she's going to nursery or whether she's staying at home, I can wake up at six, seven o'clock in the morning and hit the ground running. And even before my stepdaughter came into my life, I still got up at six o'clock in the morning and sat down, let the world wake up around me, got a nice cup of coffee or a massive cup of tea and focused in on things because I find at that time of the morning, you could be the most motivated, you could be the most rested that you will be all day. So if you hit the floor running, you tackle the things that you need to do, that you wanna get out of the way, organize your day, whatever you want. The sooner you start, the sooner those creative juices can tackle what you need to tackle. Now, if you're like me, it might just be the very first thing you do is tidy up the things around you. I'm one of those people that needs a tidy environment to work in. So I'll get up, I'll make sure that all of the dishes are done, I have a nice cup of tea, I clean the living room, and then I can sit down and then I'm focused. Because if I'm sat in that at eight, nine o'clock in the morning, my brain will be like, well, I need to pick that up, and oh, you know, you need toast or whatever. Whilst other people might dive straight into their hardest task and get it out of the way, knowing that it's all easier for the rest of the day. Two, pretend that you are indeed going to an office. There's that mental block for the first two to three months when you're working from home, where you're like, oh yeah, I'm home. For love, for all that is toast and coffee in the morning, make sure that you're in the right mindset. If you can set it in your head at a set time, you switch into work mode, or there's a set chair that you sit in, or there's a set area that you go to, as soon as you know that you're in work mode, you can focus much more, rather than, I'll just sit down, I'll have my cup of tea, I'll watch GM TV, I'll flick through the morning news, now it's 11 o'clock, now you've wasted half the morning. Get in the right mindset. This also includes getting dressed. You can't just sit there in your PJs all day. You need to, exactly like you would any other job, get up, get washed, get dressed, brush your teeth, and then put yourself in your mindset because then that way you've prepared your brain to work. Three, structure your day like you would do in any other environment. Whether you're in retail, whether you're in an office, whether you're in any other job, there will be some form of to-do list, whether it's from your manager or whether it's from yourself. This structure is the thing that will allow you to accomplish something throughout the day. For me, I have a to-do list that I write on my desktop and they have set days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. I know that that's the thing that I need to achieve that day. If I want to bleed into other days and get more done, then I can do so and it shuffles stuff up through that list and by the end of the week, I have a little bit more free time to myself, but, at least I know that as long as I do those three or five things at that set day, I'm on top of my workload. If I don't do those five things, I know I'm behind my workload. These are things that help structure me. For you, it might be your Google Calendar. You can set tasks in there, you can have set times, you can have recurring things, you can have your computer alert you when you are five, 10, 15, 20 minutes away from it and even remind you to do them. You can even set your own lunch break so you've got a pattern and a routine. Four, and this, is a little harder for me being a stepdad to a four year old, but when she's at nursery, I do this, which is have a dedicated area of work. This could just be a set work chair or a set place on your dining table or a set room in your house or a set corner of your living room. But a dedicated space helps you click into that mindset. It has everything around you. I'm very lucky that we're in a three bedroom house and the little one's got a bedroom, we've got a bedroom and this 
is kind of our shared office environment where I've already got my set set up so I can record in front of it, I can talk in front of it. And over there is an L-shaped sofa that I sit on and edit and maybe watch the rolling news with the TV, which is literally just there. But because I have a dedicated workspace, you'll be amazed how quickly your brain turns on, rather than always sitting in the same place on your sofa, whether you're Netflix and chilling, or whether you're working. You need to kind of dedicate your brain space so it turns itself on. Just like they say, if you go to bed and there's a TV in your bedroom, your brain will associate the TV in staying awake rather than going to bed. You need workplace hygiene as well as sleep hygiene. Five, don't stay at home. I know this can be hard right now, because at the point I'm making this video, we have that thing that I can't mention just in case I get demonetized, you know, that cough and cold thing. But in an ideal world, you'll get a chance to go out. Make sure that you take your laptop with you. You can work from coffee shops, you can work from parks, have a Wi-Fi enabled device, and you can work anywhere you want. Or if you don't have to take your laptop, you can take a notepad and just write things down. Just get out of the bubble. At this point in time, I understand that that may be hard, but if you've got a balcony or if you've got a back garden, as long as you keep yourself in a reasonable safe distance, then you can still do it. Plus, let's be honest, social distancing still works when you're working. I know that I prefer not to have people around me when I'm working because if people talk at me whilst I'm thinking, it gets me frustrated and annoyed. If I'm sat out in my back garden and all I can hear is the birds and the wind and I've got cows just over there, it's fantastic for my mental health. Or you can take the advantage of strolling to your local corner shop, that five, 10 minute break, that fresh air, that mind reset, because if you're frustrated on a task, you'll be amazed what a little bit of eye distancing can do. Have you ever heard of the phrase of just like computer blind or task blind, where you've been staring at the same thing for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and no matter how much you look at it, it seems to be doing the same thing or it's the same trouble. You step away from it and you come back, you'll be amazed how quickly you can find that jigsaw piece that you were missing from the puzzle just two minutes ago. Six, make it hard for you to mess around on social. Now, this has become more and more prevalent in the last few years because everybody can flick through their phone or everybody can just tab over to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. I know if I'm focusing on editing a video and it hits a hard spot, it can drive me off to Facebook out of frustration, but I'll come back to it. But if you can eliminate those entirely and just focus on the thing that you're doing, maybe even turn off the computer, move your phone away, putting your phone on silent, put it in the opposite side of the room, whatever. If you can not give yourself the chance to distract yourself, you will get so much more done. So that also means don't distract yourself with TV of your favorite thing on TV. So don't sit there and watch Game of Thrones episodes if you're really into them, because you won't end up working, you'll end up watching Joffrey get killed. Seven, commit to doing more things. You'll be amazed working from home how quickly you can spin through some things that may have taken longer in an office. When you're in the office environment and there's other people around, you might take a little longer to the coffee machine or to the water machine, or you might every now and then glance over and see someone in another cubicle or stare at the clock or have a look at the call center, whatever. I tend to find that you can actually do a couple more tasks than you would have done in a more social setting because you're much more focused. Have you ever hit that? the zone and then just kept piling through work. You'll be amazed how much additional work you'll get once you're in the zone when, you know, Billy's not there to pass you a chocolate or to ask you this question or to point at something to make you chuckle that throws you out of the zone entirely. Eight, work when you I'm the most productive. Nobody turns on the computer at seven o'clock in the morning and sprints all the way through their work in the zone, in that niche, all day, all just. We all have ebbs and flows. We all have moments when we know that we work better. Maybe you're a little bit more groggy in the morning. You don't want to talk to humans in the morning, but you're happy to edit videos. Do those in the mornings, take your phone calls in the afternoon. Maybe you're not a morning person at all and you'll forego a morning startup because you know that if you got up at nine, 10 o'clock, you could work till two o'clock at night in the morning, that kind of thing, and you get much more work done between nine at night and two o'clock in the morning. Be honest with yourself. If you know that you lag it around about two o'clock and maybe even you need a nap between two and four, then allow yourself to do so. As long as you make sure that you allow yourself to work when you know that you're most focused at eight o'clock in the afternoon. Set yourself up for success based on what you know about yourself. If you know that you're going to be wading through your brain fog, avoid that fog. Nine, save those calls for the afternoon. I find that in the morning, 
I'm less sociable, and so are many others. So what I do is I make sure that I do all my solitary tasks in the morning or after the normal nine till five crowd. So therefore I know at six o'clock in the morning till about 10, 11 o'clock, no one's really gonna pick up the phone and at 11 o'clock they're thinking about lunch. So I'm gonna start my phone calls at one o'clock in the afternoon. It also means that at seven o'clock in the evening, once again, they're not going to be there to pick up the phones. So what I do is I allocate that time from around about one o'clock in the afternoon to about five, six o'clock in the afternoon for those phone calls. Not only will my brain be more awake, but I'll also have grind you through so much work in the morning that I'll be ready for a chat. 10, stay busy. How many times have you gone to the gym and once you finally started at the gym, you got there, you finally got on the treadmill, by the end you're feeling good and you wanna keep going. But the instant you sit down and you give yourself five minutes, you've seized up and you're ready to go home. Or that's it, you're done for the day. I find that's the same with working at home. Keep your brain always on something, anything. What I do in between my pieces of work is that I'll do a task and if my work brain needs a rest, I'll go and do the washing up or I'll go and do the clothes washing or I'll prep my tea for the evening. The reason for that is because my brain continues to stay busy, it continues to spin and spin. It's like a perpetual motion machine. But because your brain's been so active, if you was to sit down and turn your brain off, it might be harder to restart that spinning. Keep your brain going, even if you're just changing it up to make sure that you're not bored. Edit your stuff in the morning, go for lunch, plan what your tea happens to be, do your washing, do your hoovering, look after that kid, make sure you're playing with their toys, etc, etc, etc. But that way you're spinning. Plus, by the time you get to bed, you've outbrained yourself and you'll be more than happy to fall asleep. But don't stop that buzzing because the more your brain's going, the more I find I get done because I'm not having to re-rev that engine to get started each and every time. I'm not doing a task for 15 minutes and then sitting down for 15 minutes and then having to restart. It's quite consciously flowing all of the time. And that also might be that I listen to podcasts whilst I'm doing the washing up, so I'm still businessing, I'm still learning, and I'm multitasking all at the same time. 11, plan on what you're going to be working on ahead of time. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, I have a rotating weekly list. I've got five or six retainer clients that need me on a weekly basis, and what I try to do is not only be ahead of that work, but trigger myself each and every day with a set of new tasks, in which when I've done them, I move them to the bottom of the list, it shuffles them up, and then over time, I'll get through them. The reason I plan for this is then I know what I need to do on a regular basis every day. I get a reminder through my notepad or through my calendar app and that then sets up my day and my workflow. Otherwise, you could be sat there going, well, I've got so much work to do that I could do it all, but then you get swamped in it all. I find if you've got 15, 20 tasks and you break them down into five tasks, you're more likely to get through those five than you looking at the 20 and you're going, well, that's too many. It's what kids do. They pile their plate full of load of food and then they look at it and then they get overwhelmed because oh, there's so much there that I'm not gonna eat it all. But if you give them a chance to graze all day, they'll eat 20 times more than you actually realize. Also, it won't feel like a never ending pit of your attention if you're able to tick off those five knowing that the other 15, 20 will get done over the course of the week and won't get you in trouble because they will get done. You just know that you've done your mini to-do list for the day, you'll feel good, you'll feel like you've succeeded something and then you can add more from the other days if you want or go and do that task that you've now earned to allow yourself to go and do. Whether it's a, a walk, whether it's a cup of tea, whether it's a bacon sandwich, or whether it's recording a video that you really wanted to do. 12, use technology to stay connected. Working from home can be a little isolating. I'm very much an introvert anyway, so I recharge on not being around people. And then when I go out, I can be very animated and I'm fine. And I'm, as long as I know the people I'm around, I'm quite good. If you saw me at VidCon, then hopefully you can tell I'm bubbly. But as soon as I get back to the hotel room, I quite like my bubble and my silence. I quite like working on my own or sitting in my office, but that doesn't mean that I don't like talking with people. I communicate with a fair few of my team members through either Slack or 
I use WhatsApp to chat with my friends. I ping them weird things and pictures and memes. I use social media to, to rant or put sarcastic comments out on Twitter or Instagram. If you want that human touch, if you want to experience the outside world, especially right now, then using those technologies to FaceTime or to Slack chat or to post pictures could be that human interaction you need to just keep your mood lifted a little bit before diving back into whatever project you've chosen to do in the afternoon. 13, match the playlist to your task at hand. Now, I tend not to actually use music. I quite like the hum of the rolling news on TV because it's boring enough that it won't always suck me in. They're saying the same things pretty much every 45 minutes, but I still feel connected with the outside world because if I haven't watched the news that day, I feel a bit weird. I feel a bit FOMO-y. But some people I know really like to listen to music whilst they're working. Whether they've deliberately chosen classical music to work with whilst they're using alpha or beta waves to kind of calm them. Whether they're using high tempo music to, to play games to or to go to the gym. Certain people like to set certain moods and you might want the same. You can thumb through things like Spotify or you can pull together specific playlists and play them, add songs and see how you go. For concentration most people suggest that things that don't have lyrics are much better because you can zone in and out of those without having to pick up a word or sing along. You can just kind of hum or enjoy the ambiance. 14. Use your laundry or your household chores as some kind of timer. Now you can adapt this any way you wish, but one time when I was editing, mass editing a load of videos for a client, I allowed myself to mass edit a video and then watch an episode of my favorite TV show and then come back and mass edit another video and so on and so forth. It forced me to not only take breaks because sometimes I can be a workaholic, but it also allowed me to give myself a forced time to work and a forced time to rest. In that case, I was able to churn out 30 odd videos that day in between doing that process. But you could do the same with your laundry, which is also a good thing. Like if you're working from home, you will generate much more mess. If you're working from home, you will want to keep the environment clean that you work in. Otherwise you might get that kind of disorganized room, disorganized brain problem. So maybe put your laundry on and then you know that you've got an hour and a half to edit that video or write that blog or make that content in any way, shape or form. At the end of that time, you've got to go and take it out and put it in the tumble dryer and then maybe do it again or maybe take your break. This kind of enforces a time limit because also you might suffer from the thing where you know that you've got five hours to edit that video and that video could be edited in half hour but because you have five hours it takes five hours because you've got that time to do so. 15 very important. Communicate your expectations with the people that you live with. Just because you work from home doesn't mean that you are always around to make a sandwich or a cup of tea or go and fetch this or go to the shop. If you are working, you should clearly tell them that between blah and blah time, that is your working hours. And within those working hours, this is what they should expect. Roommates, siblings, partners, children, and even pets to certain extents, so you have to try and teach them to respect your working times and your working space. How annoying would it be is every day that you wake up, you have to clean your office to then work in it. And then by the end of the day, all the kids come back from school or your colleague comes back from work, they trash the place and then that loses you 20, 30 minutes on the next day. Or they pile in halfway through the day when you're recording a video and that means that that footage is completely useless now. Just because you're working from home doesn't mean that you are home. But that also means the same for you. Take clear breaks. If you was to go to work, you would be forced to have at least a 15 minute break in the morning, an hour lunch break or half hour lunch break and a 15 minute in the afternoon. If you don't, then you'll either find yourself constantly grazing or constantly not eating or working yourself too hard not getting the rest that you might need. Use those breaks to get away from your desk or your chair or whatever. Go for a walk around the block, go and make a cup of tea, go and stroke your cat. Give yourself some time to decompress because otherwise you will, no matter how much you love your job, you will work yourself into stress or into illness. 17, interact with other human beings. Now, yes, you can send out e-communications and WhatsApp and stuff like that, but there's nothing stopping you walking to the corner shop, maybe not at the moment, but 
interacting with other humans, having that chat, even if it's the post lady at the front door, these help you because you're working from home, not the moon. Isolation can cause serious problems. It can make you antisocial. It can cause anxiety. It can cause depression. Enjoy some of the human interaction moments that you can. Just because you're working at home also doesn't mean that you have to work at home 24 seven, seven days a week, 365. Make sure that you still intertwine some human interaction within your normal day life in some way, shape or form. 18, meal prep. Now, this can save you a load of time. If you prepare and plan your meals out in advance, you know that tomorrow I've got pork chops. You can take your meat out the night before out of the freezer or you can get the ingredients that you need. You can maybe even prep some of the vegetables, whatever. The advantage of this is that you don't waste any precious time in the morning making that breakfast for an extra 20 minutes when you didn't need to. Just like going to work, you'd make a pack lunch or you grab something in the morning like a bagel on the way to work. You kind of have your own allocated food times, right? And that will help you. Also, if you don't prep your meals, you might either not eat or you might graze all the time, so you might either lose too much weight or constantly put on weight because you're not moving, you're just working and chomping on a packet of crisp ballon. 19. Set a definitive finishing time for your day. Now going back to what I said previously, yes you try and work within your most productive times but also you need to give yourself some downtime. Even Gary Venerchuk has said that what he does is he gets up in the morning, he works, and then between five and nine, he goes home, I think it's five and nine or seven and nine, he goes home and he allocates some family time. He knows that that bubble is his family bubble, he's not working within that bubble, and then he can click back on when they go to bed, and him and his missus have got that arrangement. But anyway, he knows that that time is the non-worky time, that's his turn off brain time, that's his downtime. That way you've created your own relaxing environment, because if you're working at full tilt, all the time it can be detrimental to your health, your productivity and your business in the long run. 20, keep the TV on, on the background. Now, I understand that you may be listening to music, right? But I find for me, even if I'm just sat there, even if the TV's on mute, kind of gives you company. If you've ever done this for your pets where you leave the radio on, maybe I'm really old, but you'll leave the, your music on or you'll leave the TV on to keep the dog company or the cat company because you don't want to make them feel lonely. I find me having the TV on, even if it's on mute, kind of gives an atmosphere to the room a little bit. I also, once again, have the rolling news on, so it helps me soak up what's going on in the outside world, so I'm not so disconnected with things. I understand what's happening. It kind of pours business knowledge into my brain as well and that way I keep up to date. Plus if it's the rolling news I kind of keep track of time as well but the TV could be something that semi-educates you. Some people put the history channel on, some people put the music channel on or you can, I don't know, Animal Planet, whatever. The TV could keep you company and it could help you in the long run without distracting you too much. Working from home could be a great way to explode your business and if you need help on starting your own business and learning from my mistakes, there's a video here on starting and here on my mistakes. Take care, I'll see you soon.